Hey, what's up, guys? This is Alex from X Trades back to you with another weekly trade ideas list. Hope everybody had a wonderful trading week last week. It was a shortened one since we had an extended weekend. So we only had four days to trade. Markets were a little bit slow. I would say it was generally choppy, but it did pull back a little bit. So bears did kind of take a W, but it wasn't anything too serious. I would say it's more like a healthy pullback. There really wasn't any follow through on the VIX or any volatility ramp up or anything like that. VIX is still very low. So the pullbacks were relatively short lived and the dip buyers are still showing up midday and kind of pumping it up into the close. And yeah, it just wasn't able to really take down new lows with a big flush or anything like that. Every low did indeed bounce. So it was pretty interesting this week for the indexes. Before we go into our setups on the week, we're gonna go ahead and get into the economic calendar. So we do have a pretty interesting week this week, Tuesday, June 27th. We do have durable goods orders. Also, we have new home sales and then there's consumer confidence as well. I would say that these three can definitely move the market it just depends and then wednesday june 28th we do have advanced retail inventories advanced wholesale inventories advanced u.s trade balance and goods and then it looks like fed chair jerome powell is speaking i think it's at some bank of england type of event so i don't think it's really going to be anything too serious when he spoke in congress last week it really didn't do too much to the markets i would say it gave a little bit of trading volatility like if you're a day trader he didn't really add anything new after the fomc press conference and i feel like a lot of people expected him not really to open his mouth too much more he hasn't really been giving too many hints or anything like that not trying to bring down the market not trying to bring it up either and then also wednesday as well is the day that they will release the bank stress test results so you can see here at 4 30 the federal reserve will unveil the results of its annual stress tests on the 20 three biggest U.S. lenders. The stress test is expected to cover crisis conditions such as unemployment rate rising to 10% and a market shock to the trading books of the banks. Bank of America, Citigroup, JP Morgan, State Street, Wells Fargo, and Goldman Sachs are some of the banks that will be in the spotlight. So we do have one bank on watch this week. I, I decided to add BAC to the watch list. There's a pretty good technical setup, so we'll get into that next. But I just want to show you that they will be dropping the results of the stress test. So these stress tests will be pretty important. It's not any real life scenario or anything. It's just a simulation on if our economy went through a recession or really any economic downturn. And they pretty much just make sure the banks have enough capital and are able to still lend and pretty much be able to withstand an economic downturn. It will be pretty important. That's going to come out after hours. And that's why the banks will be on watch this week. So that's for Wednesday. And then Thursday, June 29th, we do have Fed Chair Jerome Powell speaking again. I think this is like at some event in Spain. I would say this is probably not going to move the market too much. I mean, I, I really highly doubt he's going to say anything different to spook the markets or make it rally. So, And then Thursday, we do have the initial jobless claims. So let's just start every, every week we have the same thing. And I feel like people are starting to pay attention to this a little bit more because they do want to see that uptick in unemployment and overall just see a change in the labor market. And then also at 10 a.m., we do have pending home sales. So that could be a market mover as well. And Friday, arguably the most important, we do have personal income, personal spending, and then we do have the PCE data. So this is another inflation reading, and this is actually the Fed's preferred inflation reading, and they prefer this over the CPI. And then also there's consumer sentiment at 10 a.m. So this will be mid-session that can bring a little bit of volatility. But I'd say the PCE is probably going to be the most market moving since this is the Fed's preferred inflation gauge. And that's for the economic calendar. I'd say just most importantly, we do have the bank stress test results and the PCE. Maybe Fed Chair Jerome Powell speaking could move the markets a little bit, but I really highly doubt it. If he didn't say anything in Congress last week to kind of add to their FOMC press conference, I highly doubt he's going to add anything else. So now we'll go ahead and get into the setups. I do have three to look at this week, and then we'll go into the indexes, the DXY and the VIX. So our first one here, we're going to be looking at XLE. I do want to put energy back into the rotation here because I feel like it's starting to get a little bit near support here. Tech is kind of overbought, and I do feel like this could be a decent discount and eventually when people start rotating rotating out of tech they kind of do start to look for you know healthcare names and start looking for xle and other sectors to rotate into and we did see one hint of that i believe on wednesday so there was a little bit of a rotation out of tech and then healthcare and energy and other sectors were up even like utilities 
pretty much those sectors that go up, you know, during recession fears and stuff like that. So, but then you can see after that, I mean, it did fall two days in a row and people did start buying up tech a little bit, but overall tech did pull back on the week. But XLE here, you can see we do have a drop base rally demand zone. It's a pretty nice zone. This had a really nice run up to the upside, decent buy imbalance to the upside. So something happened over here to lead to this buy imbalance and little rally. And now you can see it came back down to test it right here and it is holding up at a slight bounce still closed down almost one percent not quite one percent but if we go down to the shorter term time frames here we do have a couple gaps worth noting so we do have one gap right here so we got one gap right there we also have another one just above that right here so eventually i feel like these could fill up obviously i don't think it's just gonna happen in one week or anything it would be over time that they would come back up, try to fill these up. And overall, I mean, the one hour does look pretty oversold here. I mean, you could see really nice support area or demand zone. And we identified that one day demand zone on the one day time frame. And I'll repeat, that is a drop base rally demand zone. So it could be decent. Obviously, for a signal, you'd probably want to see it get over Friday's high. A lot of times in these videos, I use the Friday high and the Friday low since we're doing weekend analysis. It's good to use that previous session lows and highs in order to find signals or continuation on anything that you're tracking into the next week. So Exilly here looking at calls. Might be a little bit counter trend, but it looks pretty good. And assuming we can get their rotation out of tech into other sectors like energy or healthcare or anything like that, this could be a decent name to the upside. Obviously, you want to pay attention to the crude oil futures as well. That's going to be ticker symbol CL. If you're on thinkorswim, I think it's just going to be slash CL. So exit here looking at calls. All right. And next we're going into BAC here. So you could see pretty decent trend line i wouldn't say it's like super steep or anything and obviously banks just got destroyed after the collapse of svb and other regional banks so financials have kind of been struggling a little bit but you have been able to capitalize on these oversold bounces a little a little bit if you were able to get them at the right spot and we do have that bank stress test catalyst this week so i feel like overall the banks are just going to be worth watching you can see this is a test one you get a test two you can maybe even count this general area as a kind of a test three hold up or if you just you know move your trend line like this you know that could be you know a test three and this could be a test four i usually use the wicks in my world here this would probably be a test three since we got a wick here we got a wick here and then you do have the test three coming up right here Another thing this has is a drop based rally demand zone. This would be considered a hidden demand zone because we're not using our usual red bearish base candles to find our demand zones. This is just a regular bullish candle, but you still do the open down to the low. Only difference is it's just a bullish base candle instead and you're not using the red bearish base candles. So, I mean, it could bounce from here. It looks pretty good. You don't really have any resistance until it gets up to 2980. That's all the way up here. This is all sell imbalance and lots of times price does like to fill that back up to the upside. So it could be worth a watch as well with the bank stress test results. That'll come out after hours. So obviously, you know, it might be risky to hold any banks into the bell on Wednesday just because, I mean, it could do anything. Honestly, it could be bad or it could be good and it's going to you know, make price go crazy and it could go against your position. So if you wanted to, you know, just trade up until then. Maybe stick to day trades or you could wait for the results if they end up being good and it seems like they're well capitalized and can, you know, last through hurting conditions. Then it could be worth, you know, looking at a swing trade further out or something, you know, at these lows for somewhat of a discount. Just like most trades that we look at, you could use, you know, the Friday high and low. So if you want to wait for Friday's high to get taken out, that could be a good signal to the upside. If it starts breaking down Friday's low, you might want to wait for it to test the trend line spot on or at least a little bit closer to the general area but like i said you do have this demand zone here so this general area could just hold up automatically on monday and maybe we'll never get down to the trend line that's why you do have to kind of make that decision closer to pre-market and maybe you know a little bit closer after the bell you don't have to enter right away or anything you could wait the first 15 minutes let price do its thing a lot of times there's market on open orders and that causes a little bit of volatility and it might not go in your direction or your favor right away. So sometimes, you know, people wait like 15 or 30 minutes to wait for the opening range to establish, and then they'll jump in right after that. So BAC here, I'm looking at calls just because there's this demand here. You got the uptrend line that could hold. Obviously, this thesis would go invalid if it went under the demand zone low. It's going to be like, what is that, 2734? And then if it broke the uptrend line as well, you probably want to, you know, stop out. 
wait for it to get back down to 2680s. And that's this low right here. And then there's another low under that at 2632. It's pretty much it's 52 week low. So that's another level worth watching if it broke down that. But right now still holding up structure pretty decently here. I would just, you know, use the demand zone low and also your trend line as your risk off. So BAC here looking at calls. All right. And next we're going to UAA. So this is under armor. This is actually going to be more of a long-term play that I'm looking at. Short-term wise, the technicals are there. We do have this little support holding up right here at, what is that, 697? You can probably just round it up to seven flat. It's a pretty good support. But what I'm looking at and what I found this name at when I was looking at it was by zooming out to the one week. And you can see here, we do have this crazy, crazy low from 2020. So we have this low from 2020 right down here. That's at 715. And just this overall seven areas, I mean, it's a pretty good support area. And you can see it even bounced over here at about $7 or so. And that was in 2022, but it made the low at 638. So you have your 2022, your 2022 low at 638. And then you have your 2020 low at 715. So this whole area, this whole 715 to 638, really good support area for the last three years. And it's bounced from it a couple of times. So it could be worth watching here for a long-term play or some type of swing trade that you would hold for multiple weeks. You could maybe even look at contracts with, you know, expiration months out, maybe look at leaps or something like that. The PE ratio price to earnings is actually only in the 12s right now. And generally a decent PE ratio or average is probably going to be anywhere from like 20 to 25. If you're looking at names in the S and P 500. So 12, I mean, that's, that's a great price to earnings ratio. And I would say that's relatively undervalued. If you're looking at, you know, a quick metric to find value, PE ratio is a great one to use. So like I said, you do have that 715 area all the way to 638. So that's kind of your leeway. And, you know, if it broke under 638, that could be worth looking at a risk off or, you know, maybe stopping out. But overall, it's still holding this up. And then for the short term, like I was saying, we do have this little area right here at 697. You can see it bounced right here and on Friday it did try to hold that up after gapping down. So it looks pretty good. I mean, it, this could see a bounce. Obviously, you need to see the retail sector probably bounce as a whole. But if you're looking at it short term, you know, your 697 is probably your level to keep in focus and make sure it stays above. Otherwise, I'd really look at this as a long term play, something you could add, you know, shares to hold for a pretty long time. That's probably what I'm going to do. I do have a long term account. So probably you know start buying some shares pretty soon here at these levels like i said pe ratio is good relatively undervalued at three year support all the way from 2020 to 2022 you got two great support areas right here so really worth a watch here i really feel like this could be a decent one and it's pretty undervalued so uaa i'm going to be looking at calls for long term but mostly i'm going to be looking at shares on this for a long-term hold so it looks good for upside. All right, and next we're going into the SPY. So we're gonna go ahead and start getting into the indexes here. So this week, really not too much technical wise, like pattern wise or anything like that. But what we do have on the one week here is an inside bar. If you don't know what an inside bar is, it's literally just a consolidation candle, but you can use it uh, for signals. So you have the mother body right here. So it's the previous candle next to the inside bar. If the range of your current bar, of your, of your inside bar, the low and the high is within the mother bar right here, it's called the inside bar. So what we have here is a 438.37 high of this candle and then a 432.47 low of this candle. And that's within the range of this bullish candle. And what you do, if you want to trade this, you go ahead and just like set alerts at your inside bar high and your inside bar low. If you can get a break over one of these, usually there's a pretty good trade. Like if you were to break this inside bar low uh, with good confirmation, that'd make a great put trade to the downside, at least for the short term. But this is a one week time frame inside bar. So I mean, this could be, you know, worth waiting for a one week bar to close either below this or the one week bar to close above it. And that could be a signal as well. But either way, I feel like this could give sh good short term signals for day trades and stuff too. So make sure you mark the 432.47 and the 438 levels as the levels of focus for this week because it is the inside bar high and low for this one week candle. And like I said, you could set alerts. So you just right click and you could just, you know, name it inside bar low, hit save, do the same thing right here inside bar high save and then you just wait 
So you just wait for one of these to trigger. If you get the trigger, you'd wait for a good candle confirmation. You could use like the 15 minute or maybe like a one hour candle or something. And, you know, make sure it stays below or above the level, depending on what signal the market gives you. And obviously we're closer to the inside bar low. And that's going to depend if the futures, you know, move higher tonight or lower. So we're closer to the inside bar low. So I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, maybe we, you know, break this inside bar low quicker. But I mean, there's a good chance it could hold up and even stay within the inside bar uh, if we were to enter a consolidation phase. So it's important to wait for those signals at the inside bar high and the inside bar low. But other than the inside bar, there was a little trend line here that myself and others that we were looking at in the X-Trace Discord and in chat, you can see it broke that down. So could be, you know, maybe a little short term flush here. I'm not exactly sure. We'll have to get under that inside bar low because you can see once it broke, there wasn't great follow through to the downside at all. I mean, as soon as it broke, it tried to bounce and then it broke again and I um, mean, overall, it closed almost down 1%, but I mean, it wasn't really easy to trade puts. If I show you on the 15 minute, you'll see what I'm talking about. So you can see it broke the trend line here. It was, I think it was uh, Wednesday towards the end of the close. And look, once we gap down the next day, it literally just tried to bounce. And I mean, every single time we gap down or, you know, put in a new low, it tried to bounce. So this trend line play was pretty hard to trade. Unless, you know, maybe you got it right here and you traded this gap down. So that's pretty much what I meant in the beginning of the video about this week being hard for shorts. But overall, I mean, they did bring it down lower. You can see the five day return here or the one week return here is uh, down 2%. So the bears did pick up a small W. It was just hard to trade. And you might have needed to have like, you know, monthly contracts or be a swing trader for shorts. And you probably would have had to enter, you know, up here to even really get paid for those because I mean it's just been chopping down very slowly and there really wasn't any fall through on the VIX. So that's for the SPY. Like I said, just keep an eye on this little trend breaking. Maybe look for more confirmation. And honestly your confirmation is going to be the inside bar low and the inside bar high. If you're trying to trade this trend line break, preferably you want to see get under the inside bar low of that one week candle we were just looking at. So that's for the SPY. Just make sure you wait for those signals. Like I said, you can add alerts at inside bar high and inside bar low and wait for them to hit. All right, and next we're going into the QQQ. So same thing, uh, we do have another inside bar. Like I said, this is your mother bar. This is your inside bar. And what it needs to have, like I said, is the high of the candle and the low of the candle inside of the range of this candle, which is your mother bar. And that's exactly what we have on QQQ here. So very similar to SPY, just different pricing. So you do the same thing, mark the 368.32, name it inside bar high, mark 360.22, name that inside bar low. We can even add alerts on this one as well. So we'll just go ahead, right click the low here, add alert, already have them input here. So we have inside bar low, right click again for the high, and it's already here as well. And then just hit create, so we'll just wait. So now on the SPY and QQQ, you should have the inside bar low and the inside bar high marked on both of them. And you'll basically just wait for a signal on those and that could be a pretty great trade inside bars can give really good trades i mean it just depends like i said inside bar could also signal it's going to go into a consolidation phase and lots of times the, the inside bars will stay you know generally within the same range and kind of stay close to each other in terms of atr or average true range which kind of sucks you know during a consolidation phase but i mean it's, it's good to day trade like you could trade the inside bar low and try to catch a bounce off that or you know look for resistance off the high in choppy markets but it just depends i personally would wait for the low or the high to get taken out and that gives a good trade. So similar to SPY, I showed you a trend line. QQQ kind of went through the same thing here. You can see you got a test one, you got a test two. This test three right here failed. This is your confirmation bar that it broke. And then instantly, really big rally to the upside, up over 1%. And now you even have a little inside bar right here of this big, big bullish candle. You have inside bar from Friday. So uh, if that takes out the low of that, that's another good signal. But I personally would use the one week. Uh, your one week ranges are always the best for reversal signals. So just make sure you set alerts on that. Your inside bar low gain and taken out, that should be good confirmation for this trend line breaking. Because you can see there really wasn't much follow through. I mean, it's it's been toying around. And if you, if you took a trade right when it broke the trend line, probably got messed with a little bit there. We'll go down to the shorter term time frames. So, oh, well, I mean, this is pretty good. So this is the initial break. Really nice flush to the downside. So you can see why trend lines can make, you know, 
good day trades and stuff like that on the one day time frame. But then you see, I mean, really struggling to put in new lows. Every time we put in a new low, it just bounced. So dip buyers are still showing up. That's due to the low VIX, low volatility. People are still willing to buy. So you got to be careful. And I've been pretty much repeating that for the past couple of weeks. If you're trading puts, you want to take profits very quick. Last week, we had Amazon and TSM for puts, and they both paid okay. They were, they were good day trades, and they both did go down, you know, over 1%. Uh, TSM maybe even went down 2 or 3%, but it did have random bounces similar to the indexes. So you had to be, you know, quick and take profit on those puts, but they did work out. Uh, you just have to be really selective and don't get greedy because volatility is very low. So that's where the QQQ is similar to SPY. We're just waiting for the inside bar high or the inside bar low to get taken out, and that'll give you a signal, hopefully. All right, next we're going into the IWM. So last week we did have this 184.45. We had an alert set on that. I could go to the alert log. It might have already, yeah, it's already deleted, but if you go back and watch the video, the 184.45 was a level we set an alert on. We just wanted to, I think we named it breakdown. So it eventually broke down and you can see it made a really great trade once it broke down. So that's the importance of setting alerts and just overall, you know, on the weekend doing your analysis because eventually the next week following you could get a signal and you won't have to keep browsing through your charts and keep looking at it. You'll, you just have that alert and you'll know that it's, ready and that happened on iwm here so it breached it a couple times you got a fake out you got another fake out but this was a great confirmation right here this is a really good confirmation that it was getting weaker you got a new low closed down pretty weak and then gap down even heavier so really great trade if you were able to set the alert at 184.45 that we set and trade it to the downside I was pretty much skeptical on longs up here uh, because it's 38.2 fib and we covered that in the last video. I pretty much mentioned that this supply right here and this 38.2 could act as resistance and you'd want to wait for it to get back down, you know, closer to this demand zone or the 200 SMA where we're at currently. So this could signal a bounce in the IWM. Obviously, I'd want to see like a decent one day candle close to signal that we're reacting to this demand zone and you want to see it close, you know, maybe a little bit above the demand zone uh, where it starts, or just give you know a decent bullish candle or some type of bottom wick showing that it's reacting to the 200 SMA or it's reacting to the demand zone in general. This is a great demand zone, by the way. It's a rally base rally zone, classic. You got a really hard rally, makes a base, really hard rally to the upside. So this little imbalance right here is great. And I feel like IWM could bounce from this. Obviously I found some weakness probably due to financials and like regional banks and stuff. They kind of go hand in hand. So you do want to see a bounce in financials to kind of bring up this ETF in general or just the Russell 2000 in general, which is ETF tracks. And hopefully if IWM uh, has this demand zone here and overall small caps have a demand zone here, hopefully uh, that'll make, you know, financials bounce. And we can see that bounce in BAC and other names. Uh, obviously, the bank stress test results that are coming out on Wednesday, that could have a big impact on IWM as well. So if the results are good and it seems like the banks are well capitalized and can, you know, with withstand economic downturns, uh, it could bring the banks up. So... Never underestimate the bull, especially right now. And banks are kind of oversold, so maybe we'll see that power show up randomly. I'm not sure. We'll have to see. But like I said, this demand zone is great. Uh, we're right at the 200 SMA, which is pretty strong resistance right here. It could act as support now. Before, we were looking for this 200 SMA to get broken before looking at long signals and the 179s to 180s. You want to see it get over that. And your trade to the upside was right there. And then pretty much stall out right here which we mentioned last week and you'd want to wait for it to get under 184.45 and that was right here so now just focus on this demand zone focus on the 200 sma if you want to trade this risk off is going to be if it broke the demand zone low you could be skeptical if it gets under the 200 sma as well but then you do have that little support there and lots of times uh, it could fake out so the 200 SMA isn't like law or anything, but you know, if it seems like it's going to get under, under the demand zone low or close under that, that's a better signal than, you know, the 200 SMA breaking, at least for the short term. So that's for IWM looking pretty good here for a potential bounce. Just need to see a little bit more like a one day candle or some type of reaction to this demand zone. All right. And next we'll go into the DXY. Usually we go into the VIX next, but looks like I had this one first. So we'll just go ahead and cover this one. So last week we had this 102 level 
was pretty much your line in the sand. Uh, pretty much had to get under that in order to fall. It was not able to do that. It held the support. Also formed this little downtrend line. I actually posted this downtrend line in the chat, I believe, right when it was at the line. And then pretty much the next day it broke out of that. Um, so I would say that this looks a little bit bullish, but I do want to see it getting back over 103s. We've covered 103 on the dollar so many times. I'm not even going to you know show you why it's important this time. I'll just let you know that the 103 is the COVID 2020 peak. So it's the exact peak from 2020 when the dollar peaked out. And that's why it's an important level. So we want to see it get back over that. If you want to go see on your chart, you will find the 2020 peak. Just literally go back to 2020 when, you know, COVID was happening and you'll find the dollar peaking out at 103. And that's this 102.992. We just rounded up to 103. So we do want to see the dollar getting over that. You want to see it make a base off that in order to go higher. But like I said, we do have this little breakout and that could be good and that could take it over 103 honestly and you do have the kdj crossing up here so your oscillator starting to cross up to the upside after being down for a couple weeks so that could be a good sign as well it looks like it's probably just going to make a little inside bar here consolidation candle you get a big big uh update here almost half a percent which is pretty good for the dollar anywhere from half a percent to you know 0.75 in the dollars pretty uh it's pretty glorious to be honest and it kind of signals some currency volatility because it's obviously i mean the dollars are tightly traded market so currencies don't really move all too much so when you see a move like this or like this down 0.83 percent that's a that's a pretty decent move for the dollar and it's time to pay attention so so just uh, make sure it gets over that 103 if you do want to see the dollar go higher here dollar going higher obviously could be bad for equities i would say equities have kind of been in their own little world but the dollar did pop these two days, Thursday and Friday, and the market did pull back kind of those days as well. So the dollar bid kind of, I mean, it could be correlated with the market pulling back a little bit. Obviously, we didn't get that fall through on the VIX. So the VIX didn't really go up with the dollar too much. Uh, I would say that, you know, the dollar probably moves the most compared to these two. But like I said, just make sure it gets over that 103 if you want to see it go higher. If not, um, I mean, it, it could reject 103s and try to go back down to the 102s. But it is mid-range right now. So I, I wouldn't really say that we have a signal yet. We'd want to see it get over 103 or we'd want to see it get over under 102 which is this recent support, but we do have this breakout right here. So it's worth noting that it could get over 103, to be honest, just from this little breakout, you got the KDG pointing up and overall, I mean, this could be a little bullish curl up. So that's for the DXY, just focus on those levels. Also, if you want to use this for like volatility signals, I really recommend pairing it with the VIX. So making sure the VIX is going up as well as the dollar. If you want to see the market pull back or see the dick, the DXY fall and the VIX fall in order to see the market scream higher. And the reason why I mentioned that in the last clip is because the DXY by itself has kind of had a messed up correlation and the VIX is so low. Honestly, it hasn't really been reliable as a solo indicator. So it could be good to pair them together. But we'll go ahead and get into the VIX now. So last week we had 1350 in focus. I mentioned that I need to get under that in order for the market to go higher, uh, to, to make a new high at least. I, it wasn't able to do that. The S&P wasn't able to make a new high, but it did get under 1350 on Wednesday here. Let's go ahead and look at the SPY on Wednesday. Actually, the market closed down half a percent, So, but also we did try to bounce that day, and it could be because volatility was low. But overall, I mean, it's under 1350 again, very briefly. It's not like anything too serious, but it will need to get back over that 1350 in order to you know, start getting back up. This 1410 here is a level from 2021, and then 1473 is also a level from 2021. I think these are two low points from 2021, and they were basically... Uh, three-year lows so they're pretty important going back in time and then our most recent low is 1350 obviously which comes from right here so we do need to see getting back over 1350 most importantly if you want to see volatility come back up i say this every week you want to see getting over 20 and closing over 20 for right now for an important level we need to see get over 1553 and that's this little area right here that's because above that you have all this free space right here into this resistance right here at 1831. So that's all free space. And if the VIX explodes upwards and gets over 1553, there's a good chance that that area will just shoot up, honestly, and get up to 1831. If it can get over 1831, it takes you up to 20 flat. 
I really can't put us any higher than 20 flat until we see it get over that because it's rejected so many damn times. So we'll have to see it get over that overall. If you want to see, you know, fear getting priced into the market, that 20 absolutely has to get broken. And we pretty much repeat that every week. So you do want to be careful just trading the VIX and stuff or using it for signals right now because it's so low. We don't really have anything of substance here, but if you really do really do want to focus on those levels, you want to see it getting back over 1350, which I tried to hold up here last week. I uh, just wasn't able to do that. You want to see it getting over 1410 and 1473. And look here on Tuesday, it went up to 1473 pretty much and rejected right off of that. So this 2021 level from 1473, pretty important to get over. And then 15 flat also as well, because it rejected right here. So we need to see it getting over 15 flat as well. But Otherwise, really dangerous spot. Volatility is extra low. It's very cheap to hedge. And honestly, too low for me to just start, you know, taking spy swing trades and stuff like that to the upside, taking calls. It's just too low for me right now. I don't want to see it. Volatility coming back up for a little bit. Let the market dip. Spy pull into demand. Then you can buy some calls. I mean, this, this area is just very risky. And there's a good chance it could snap back up. So I've been playing very careful uh, trading calls up here. Just because, I mean... Uh, once it wants to have a meme regression, it'll have a meme regression. And like I said, pretty much repeatedly on other videos, this 2022 to 2023 average close is all the way up here. So we got VIX right here, 2022 to 2023 average close all the way up here. And this is our average. So we're way below average right now, which is very risky if you're trying to go long in the market. It's better to wait for it to spike. When the VIX is high, it's time to buy. When the VIX is low, take it slow. It's a saying. Uh, it's a quote and you should bat it into your head because it's pretty true. And I know markets can feel a little bit slow and you might feel like you're missing out a little bit, but eventually, you know, reality sets in and volatility comes back for a brief period and then it can, you know, come back down. So as for the VIX, just make sure it gets over the 1350. I would honestly, if you're going to use this as a signal, I would really wait for it to get over 1553 and use that as a major signal point and then use 1831 as a signal point and then use 20 as a signal point. These little levels right here, not so much. Maybe if it got over 15 flat, that could give you something of substance. But 1553, most important. That's this low right here. And then you get all that free space. So that's what we'll need to see. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to our Xtrades YouTube channel. And I'm going to get this chopped up, edited, and sent out. I love you guys. And I'm out.